This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG. IMF proposal will affect PNG Kina. 11 men arrested over ILG dispute in Kainan 2. And PNG joins 94 nations in state partnership program. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Louis Mangu. Thank you for joining us. Earlier this year, the International Monetary Fund proposed to Bank of PNG to remove the trading bans of Kina by the end of August and adopt a flexible exchange rate regime for PNG. Economics expert Maholo Palavale stated in an exclusive interview that this would cause the Kina to depreciate against foreign countries. The IMF proposed policy intervention is expected to cause exchange rate depreciation due to weak demand for Kina by generating high prices for imports. Mr. Lavelle elaborates that there is a high chance that the value of the Kina will decrease against PNG's trading partners. The Kina is depreciating against the US dollar and at least for next year, it's going to depreciate against all our major trading partners, so that's Australia, Malaysia, China, Singapore, and I think the Philippines. This depreciation will see additional costs of imported goods and services being put on customers in the form of high prices. Um, a lot of um, households depend on imports, and a lot of those imports are going to become more expensive when the Kina loses value. Mr. Lavelle urges the government to look into ways to address this depreciation carefully to maintain a fair outcome for the country. The government has to look long term and see the effects of when the Kina depreciates, how you can address um, the pass through to households and to the prices they actually um, have to contend with. So um, looking at that, again, bringing in all those taxes, but also limiting the amount that um, the Kina depreciates and phasing it by phase-by-phase phase depreciation over months can actually ease the burden in households. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. The current inflation in the country is projected to continue into next year and will have a hard effect on Papua New Guineans. This is stated by economics expert Maholo Palavail. PNG's current inflation said to be caused by two main global factors, which are the COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine-Russian war, is said to continue into next year. Mr. Lavelle explains that the increase of food and fuel prices caused by these global factors will have a ripple effect on the other areas of the economy. When fuel and food prices go up, then um, you have um, second round effects. So second round inflationary effects are the effects on other goods. And so everything's gone up. Core inflation's high rate of 5% this year and projected to 4.5% next year shows the actual goods that people consume in the country. Mr. Lavelle says all this contribute to the inflation remaining high. Because of all those global effects, it's affecting the domestic economy and it's, um, it's going to be high for the, um, for the medium to long, um, short to medium term. And so people can expect that. He urges the people of the country to be expectant of inflation and its impacts. It's had a, um, had a hard effect on households that are poorer because um, it's what economists call a regressive effect in that if you have a low income then you're on to, and when prices of goods go up, then you're only going to purchase necessities. And so the disposable income that you have to um, use to buy other things, it's going to be more limited. And so that's what we're seeing and we're projecting it to last at least to the end of next year. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. A total of 11 arrests have been made so far in relation to the recent ILG dispute among villages of the Agariba LLG in Kainantu district in the Eastern Highlands province. 
The Kainantu Police Station Commander Inspector Stephen Yalamu revealed that 11 men have been charged for carrying weapons in public place following a police warning to both sides to cease fighting. Inspector Yalamu said fighting which started on Tuesday 5th December and escalated on Thursday when six villages from the Yauna community attacked the Punano village along the highway. He said leaders from both factions have come forward to his office for peace negotiations, resettlement and to risk to normalcy to the conflict communities. Yalamu added that with the limited resources, police are already on the ground. However, more assistance is needed from the Kainan to DDA to boost policing and restore normalcy with regard to assisting the displaced families, especially women and children. Mr. Yalamu acknowledged Obura Wonenara MP John Boito for his prompt response in assisting police with fuel. He also thanked the churches for working with police to ensure peace is maintained between in both sides. The Agarabi local level government president highlighted that the villages involved are within the ward 6 and 7 of the Agarabi LLG, which has affected more than 3,000 population. However, traffic along the 7 mile section of the Highlands Highway in Kainantu has been restored with heavy police presence backed by assistance from the Special Service Division MS units from Goroka. The Catholic Diocese of Wabeg Girls' Vocation Descentment Retreat was held during the festive season that saw girls from different parishes coming together to strengthen their religious and social connections. Wabeg Catholic Diocese Bishop Justin Ayn Sugi confirmed that the CDW Girls' Vocation Descentment Retreat, which began on Tuesday and was attended by a total of 35 participants from the Pumakos, Sangurab, and Sari Paris. Girls in some rural village of Anga province are not encouraged to attend school as they are considered to be properties of men and are customarily responsible for giving birth, raising children, and looking after the household. More awareness is more awareness is needed to break the cycle of deliberate ignorance and promote the universal rights of girls to attend school and have equal opportunities to progress in the modern world. Bishop Sugi sincerely acknowledged the financial support of a fellow Catholic faithful, Martin Korokan, for sponsoring this worthy course that ended yesterday. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Papua New Guinea joins 94 other nations from Europe, Asia, South America, North America, and Africa in the Department of Defense National Guard Bureau State Partnership Program with the Wisconsin National Guard. Throughout 2023, the Wisconsin National Guard strengthened its growing relationship with Papua New Guinea through the National Guard State Partnership Program, or SPP, to share best practices for security support to civilian authorities, emergency management, disaster planning, port security, hazardous materials, and weapons of mass destruction response initiatives and airport security, among others. In the program, National Guard units from U.S. states collaborate with partner nations on military and civil affairs, including disaster response. Major General Paul Knapp of the Wisconsin National Guard said this was an important year for the relationship with Papua New Guinea and they are actively collaborating on military mobility, information exchanges, and military-to-military -military engagements in both Wisconsin and Papua New Guinea. They look forward to furthering the mutual commitment to realizing a shared vision for security throughout the Pacific. Major General Mark Goyner of the Papua New Guinea Defense Force adds, for Papua New Guinea the chance to be part of this great program and to contribute to regional and international peace and stability is important. Highlights of the relationship in 2023 includes Wisconsin PNG Partnership Signing Ceremony, 
Medical Subject Matter Expert Exchange, Senior NCO Subject Matter Exchange, Legal Subject Matter Exchange, Disaster Response Exchange, Tamiok Strike 2023, Bilateral Defense Dialogue and Explosive Ordnance Disposal Subject Matter Exchange. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. Former inmate Billy Aki, who has experienced life in prison while serving a term of eight years, donated food supplies worth 5,000 kina to the detainees of Bomana Prison yesterday. The former inmate encouraged the detainees to serve God while in prison. That will help change them to be a better person as he is a living testament to death. Mr. Aki, during speech, raised questions on the government fund to Bomana Correctional Service that is supposed to provide disciplinary programs for the detainees. Law you smart like carabus in carabus, but you fail like bad to managing carabus. You don't look sour, yes, 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 you don't look sour, you mean. Project officer from the National Capital District Governor's Office, Ron Muip, told the detainees and the CS officers that NCDC is well prepared to facilitate and support social activities within the country, including detainees in all prisons of PNG. We uh, black students will be working together. We're working together on such small programs where we are running from now on until next year I go onwards. So we are fully prepared. Whatever that we have with us in the office, we will always work together to the command and control of uh, CIS so we can facilitate and we can work with them. So we can put up the over there. The acting jail commander of CS, Klatus Yaki, put forward a request to the governor for a bigger donation next year, 2024. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. In the spirit of unforgetfulness and giving this festive season, Mr. Biliaki also donated 2,000 kina worth of food supplies to the female detainees at the female wing in Bomana prison yesterday. Mr. Aki donated a total of 7,000 kina worth of food supplies to the detainees at Bomana prison. Of the 7,000 kina, 5,000 kina was the initial donation to the main prison, while the 2,000 kina was added on last minute for the women detainees. Aki told the female detainees that funding will be provided separately for both women and men through NCDC Governor Paul Spakop's office to take part in sports during next year's Christmas. So what the funding will be done next year by people to the budget person to approve from so then, the government is approving budget now, but we can give figure with that. But now, we can give figure, we can give budget yet, so we can give figure. But we can also come the next year and come look how we live long. Corporal Evelyn Ovoy, on behalf of the Correctional Service Bomena, expressed appreciation of Billy Aki's efforts in donation of food supplies to the inmates. You yet you stop inside now, you feel him the pain of it, so that's why you think him a plan now, you come back long. Look at me, plan, me plan, appreciate him, come blow you. Representing the female detainees at the female wing, Bomana Prison, Sarah Simon extended their gratitude to Governor Pakop and Billy Aki. We look at our families to outside at this festive time, we're losing things to me, but Calabus and thing in me, plan, I come, you told brothers, you plan, come, me plan, thank you. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. With the labor ward still busy through the festive season, it is alarming to note that there are only 24 delivery beds that cater for expecting mothers in NCD, Central Province and parts of Gulf Province. On Boxing Day alone, 37 babies were born in the nation's capital, 20 males and 17 females. Reports from the labor ward indicated that nine staff members consisting of midwives and nurses were roasted on the day to deliver the babies. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us.
Tokai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Rugby League in Amazing Port Mosby will welcome New Year's Eve in style with hosting of the National Capital District Governors Cup Rugby League Challenge Grand Final on Sunday, the 31st of December at the Se Hubert Murray Stadium in Konedobu. A total of 70 teams took part in the 2023 NCD Governors Cup Rugby League Challenge in both men's and women's divisions in the past three weeks. NCD Governors Cup Tournament Coordinator Billy Aki thanked all the 70 teams for participating in this year's Rugby League Challenge. Communities and rugby league lovers have been turning up in large numbers at Waigani's Coney Tigers Oval, Garewoo Sports Centre, Hola Ipi Park and McGregor Police Barracks Oval in support of their teams. <laughs> Patron of NCD Governors Cup, our Sparkhope allocated 300,000 kina to support the biggest rugby league challenge in the city. The aim of the Rugby League Challenge is to create opportunity for raw talents to expose themselves for scouting and also bringing the city together through sports to celebrate Christmas in unity. The Governor's Cup Grand Final tomorrow will be a fun-filled entertainment day with live performances by fan favorites and local artists Mal Maniga Kuri and Mike Stoto of Squatters Band, including shows by ACDP dancers and Poly Crew. Meanwhile, in Friday's first major semi-final match of the Cup, Barra Fox Cliffhangers of Ola defeated VP Sari Oaks of Five Mile 14-6 to meet M3 Bulldogs of Morota in the Grand Final. Cliff Angers led by all of flies Roland Andere, Benson Dapire, Darren Anape, Omega Nari and Andrew Brothers, Tamo Amos and Barnabas proved too strong for Sari Oaks. The highly fancied Surrey Oaks strong lineup of Gabby Taune, Andepe Tatape, Jordan Simon, Freddie Jonathan, Daru One Piece, Joel, and Paul Tapie could not contain the fast finishing Barra Fox Cliff Angers. In the other cup major semi finals, M3 Bulldogs scored in the last 10 minutes to beat their big brothers Morota Swans 10 to 8. M3 Bulldogs, led by Anons, Samuel Yap, Cedric Kepas, Elijah Tandope, Linden Mongea, and Bob Nale, muscled their way past the Morata Swans lineup of Eni Kepas, Darius Baluba, Peter Pagali, Hamilton Ayufa, Dobby Michael, and Junior Wak. And in the plate grand final, RMA Jokers will meet Seal RLC, while in the bowl, Oma Boda Storms will meet NPS Chiefs. Arima Wanderers defeated 973 Eagles 14 to 6 on Thursday to claim the men's pennants grand final. In the women's division, PCL Venoms will meet Morata Bullets in the cup grand final, while Olik Sadimas will battle it out with Dustef in the plate grand final. Dead and Strukai Sports, the Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Strukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region. Port Mosby City, partly cloudy with possible showers and thunderstorms. Daru, partly cloudy with brief showers. Kerama, partly cloudy with few showers. Alotau, partly cloudy with few showers and Popondeta, cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. In the Momase region, Lay City, partly cloudy with few showers. Medeng, partly cloudy with rain showers with possible thunderstorms. We were partly cloudy with a shower or two. And Vanimo, partly cloudy with few showers. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, Partly cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms. KVN, cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms. Kokopo and Rabaul, cloudy periods with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Kimbe, cloudy periods with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. And Buka, cloudy periods with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. 
In the islands region, Mount Agin City, cloudy periods with rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Goroka and Kundiawa, cloudy periods with few rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Mendi and Wabe, cloudy periods with re few rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Waters of Southern PNG and Indonesian border to Daru to Kiwai Islands to Kerema to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samurai Islands seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Eastern and Western Milan Bay Province, Milan Bay Islands, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters north of Cape Vogel to Uon Gulf to Finsafen, seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of Finsafen to Vitias and Dampier Strait to CRC and Long Islands, seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Waters of Long Island to Medeng, to Wewek, to Vanimo and Northern PNG and Indonesian border, seas 0.5 to 1 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands to New Island, seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Waters of East and West New Britain, seas 0.5 to 1 meter. And waters of Bougainville, seas 0.5 to 1 meter. Coral Sea, sea is smooth to slight, southeast winds of 5 to 50 knots. Solomon Sea, sea is slight, southeast winds of 10 to 50 knots. Bismarck Sea, sea is smooth to slight, northwest to south, easterly winds of 5 to 50 knots. And the Pacific Ocean, sea is smooth to slight, westerly winds of 5 to 50 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Saturday 30th of December 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing and good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods, celebrating 90 years in PNG.